Hey, what's up you guys? I'm Sarah Labratt and today we are going to be talking about how to plan your book. I would have called this how to plot your book if I was only aiming this at plotters, but this video is aimed at plotters, pantsers, and everyone in between. With getting ready to plan your book, it is important to try and figure out which of those three camps you fall into. If you like plotting your book beforehand and figuring out what's gonna happen during the book, who the characters are, what the character arcs are gonna be, what the plot is, how the book is gonna end, all of that, you would be in the plotter camp. If you are a pantser, you fly by the seat of your pants, you just sit down to write and just kind of see what happens. Or you can be somewhere in between, whether that means you're more of a headlights writer where you only have an idea of what's gonna happen in the next couple of chapters, or if you are somebody who likes to sit down and have somewhat of a general idea of what's gonna happen without going through and really listing out what's gonna happen in every act or chapter. And figuring this out is really just meant to be more helpful for you in figuring out what is best Best for you as you go into trying to plan a book. I myself have definitely identified as a pantser for a very long time, but as time has gone on and going into the planning of my next book, I definitely want to try to be a little bit more in between pantser and plotter, which is a big part of why I'm making this video today. After figuring out if you're a plotter or a pantser or something in between, the next step is applying that to try to figure out how much of the story you want to know before you start writing. Like I said, pantsers tend to want to not know very much before they begin writing and plotters tend to want to know a lot more. If you're a pantser, you might want to jump to the time on the screen because I'm gonna to talk to the plotters for just a second. There are so many different ways of plotting and so many different plotting methods that it might really just be a trial and error basis to figure out which of these methods or any other methods that might work for you while plotting. And I'm just mentioning these methods because I think they're really important to be aware of to either examine to see if there's anything from these methods that you can pull while you are working on building your own method, or if you can find things in these methods that you don't want to apply to your own. The first I'm going to touch on is using the Save the Cat Writes a Novel Beat Sheet, which goes off of story percentages. And I don't want this to sound bad because I don't think it is, but it kind of makes the writing process and the story structure a little bit formulaic, but it's also based on a formula that works. And basically it says that act one is the first 20% of the novel that includes things like the opening image, the theme stated, the setup, the catalyst, and the debate. Act two takes up the middle 60% and includes things like the fun and games, the midpoint, the bad guys closing in. And then act three is the last 20% of the novel. And that's basically the finale and the final image. But this book basically breaks down each of those pieces that it suggests for each percentage, which can really help you structure a novel, especially if it is your first time writing one, or if you feel like you've struggled with structuring your stories in the past. From what I've noticed, the writers that make YouTube videos use this a lot more than any other. The Save the Cat Beat Sheet definitely seems like it is the most common. That doesn't mean it's gonna work for you, doesn't mean it worked for me, but I gave it a shot, I figured out what I liked about it and what I didn't like, and then used that to address moving forward. Another method of plotting is the three act, nine block, and 27 chapters method of plotting, where each act is broken down into relatively even parts, which are then broken down into blocks, which are then broken down into chapters. I would say that this seems to be the, roughly the second most popular option that I see from writers here on YouTube. Again, doesn't mean it's gonna work for you, but maybe you can look at this and see a couple of things that you like that you want to apply to your own method. And the last plotting method that I want to touch on today is the story gridding method. I used this method when I went back and reverse outlined my high fantasy project, which I call Project DE, but basically it is a giant grid or a grid the size of however big you want it to be. For me, it ended up taking up four lined sheets of paper, but on that grid format, along the top, you list out the plot, the subplot, the characters, and whatever else is significant enough to be mentioned and be included in a variety of places throughout the story. And then along the side, you list out the chapter or the group of chapters or the beginning, middle, end, however broad or specific you want to be with it, and then go through and fill out each box or almost every box with what you want to happen in chapter five with the main character or the antagonist or chapter 32 and 
and the dog in the story or whatever it is. And I did try this and I have found it to be the most successful for me personally because it allowed me to track and display so many different aspects of my story all at one time. If you wanna check out the video where I did that, it will be linked up in the cards and down in the description box below if you wanna check that out after this. If you decide to plot your story, I think the most important thing to keep in mind is that your outline, whichever method you choose to use, should serve you and it does not need to be rigid. Things change and your outline should be able to change as well. You are the one that's writing the story. Don't let your outline dictate what you can and cannot do. Because you are the creator of your outline, you can change the outline at any point. If something is no longer serving your story, don't keep it in just because it's on the outline. Accommodate, change things. The outline can change and that I think is something that's crucial to remember. But basically with any of these plotting methods, the most important things to keep in mind is an idea of what the beginning, middle, and end will be, or at least the beginning, maybe the end, maybe the middle, depending on how much you wanna plan ahead of time, where it's going to happen, and who the protagonist and the antagonist are going to be. The next thing you need to figure out while planning your book is the what if, or the hook of the story. The what if is the whole thing that the story is built around. It is that one first concept that you had, or maybe not the first one you had, because I know that I can come up with like world building snippets or character snippets before I get to the what if or the hook of the story. But the what if is basically the backbone of the plot, or it's the thing that the plot will eventually be built around. And then depending on how deep into planning you want to go before you start writing your story, you can start filling things in around that what if concept. And I recommend doing this by either asking why or how about every piece of that what if concept and everything that comes up after that. Basically asking yourself these questions will help you figure out what you don't know so you can start to figure out what you need to know or what you want to know before you start writing. Once you've discovered that what if, it is time to start thinking about your characters on character arcs. Or if you're pantsing, maybe not the arc part, but at the very least, you need to start thinking about who your characters are going to be. And I'm not going to go very deep into this right at this current moment because that's actually going to be in a video next week. So if you are not already subscribed, make sure you scroll down below and hit that big red subscribe button so that YouTube notifies you when that goes live. But the reason that your characters and character arcs are so important and why I'm making an entirely separate video about it is that a story is good when it has compelling characters and strong characters can carry a weak plot, whereas a strong plot cannot carry weak characters. Now that you've come up with the premise of your book or the what if or the hook, and you kind of have an idea on who the characters may be, you can use that questioning system of asking why and how to start coming up with subplots. Subplots or the plot lines that are not nearly as major as the primary plot line add depth to the story and add depth to the characters themselves. Subplots can be many things, but they are often smaller plot lines that either assist the primary plot or touch on or influence other parts of the characters' lives to make the story more complex. Coming up with subplots can sometimes be a little bit tedious and a little bit stressful if you're not entirely sure what you want to include in this story, which I think is why using the why and how questions off of your what if statement is such a successful way for coming up with subplot ideas. The next thing I recommend doing is starting an idea snippet document. And this is for any, and I really do mean any idea you get for the story. This is the document where you could include things like character quirks, things your characters might say or things they might wear, a scene idea, a character idea, but basically any idea you get about the story, I like keeping them all in one document so they're easy to find and flip through and develop as I get to that point. I also suggest compiling them into a document because I've had stories in the past where I write ideas down on post-it notes, in notebooks, on my phone, on my computer, and then when I'm trying to look for something, I can never find it. So if you decide to write it down in any of those places or any idea that's not on whatever you are writing your book on, I would suggest compiling it at the end of the day or after you've had an idea and written it somewhere else back into that idea snippet document so that again, everything is easy to find. These idea documents have completely saved some of my stories and from tracking all of those idea snippets in one document have also given me ideas for sequels based on some of the ideas that I had in those documents. Now that you've sort of started exploring 
exploring your story and planning your story, whether that's plotting or some ideas before you start pantsing, there are two last things I like to do. And the first one is to start building a playlist. And I fill that playlist with any song that makes me think of my story idea. This playlist can be so great if you wanna listen to music while you're writing or if you're like me and you can't listen to music while you're writing, but you like to listen to music before you start writing, like if you're in the car driving back to your apartment or house and you just need to start getting back in the mindset of writing your story and you wanna listen to some music, you can put on your playlist for your story and have those songs pull you back into your idea so that when you get back to writing your book, you are ready, you are in it, and you're ready to write. And the last thing, when you've started to have a real feeling for your story, I recommend starting a Pinterest storyboard for it. And then you can just go crazy and pin anything that reminds you of your story or anything that incites a little bit of an idea for your new story to this board. And so then you have an entire board of images that reminds you of your story and that you can look back on when you're maybe feeling a little bit stuck or when you're just really excited about your story and you want to start thinking about it again. But it's just a great way to capture in images the feeling of your story that is easy to reference back to, but also looking through images can also give you more ideas for your story. With that, I hope you guys really enjoyed this video. If you did, I would really appreciate it if you could give it a big thumbs up because that really supports my channel by telling the YouTube algorithm that you liked my video and that someone else might too. Feel free to leave a comment down below on any planning tips that you might have for the other people that are watching this video. And Abby Emmons and Ellen Brock also have really great videos on planning and plotting, and so I will be linking some of my favorites down below in the description box if you wanna go check those out after this. But with that, thank you guys so much for watching. I'm Sarah Lebrat, and I will see you guys in the next video. Bye.